the shop today on a Saturday, like many Saturdays. The work doesn't stop just because it's the weekend, although I wish it would sometimes. But when I get there, we're gonna make something cool, I promise. If you guys are coffee lovers and you're a dark roast, it's delicious. Good morning, fish heads. Long time no see. Missed you guys. We are going to do a subscriber requested pattern. This is something that you guys have been asking a lot about, and it actually beat out making the planets in the galaxy. So, you guys have asked to see how I do this particular pattern. It's just kind of like a, a Jedi mind trick. It's fairly easy to do once you figure out how to get everything in. It does involve some stencils, so let's get started. This has already got some pearl white on it. It's a leftover from another run of another pattern that I did, so since it's sitting here, this is what we're going to use for the pattern today. We're going to start with white. Just a solid white, and this is the Jacquard mix. It's got Jacquard uh, opaque white and it also has golden titanium white which is right there. We're just going to cover it evenly. How have you guys been? I missed you. Lots and lots. I've been traveling. Uh, my mom has finally retired so I spent some time with her. She's getting ready to move to the mountains, get out of the crowded city of Norfolk. Super excited about that for her. She's not moving to Georgia. Or some of you guys are going to ask. Um, but she's not. She's going to move, I want to say, either the southwestern corner of Virginia or right near Sparta, Asheville, North Carolina. So she's always wanted to come to the mountains. She'll be closer to me. She's kind of equidistant between the families now. So she's still got family in Virginia, in Maryland, me here in Georgia, and family in Arkansas. So that's super cool. Very happy, happy retirement mom. We've got this getting happy. I'm going to do a quick heat set off camera. Come right back on. Heat set off camera. Now, normally I would go ahead and pull this white out of here, but there's really like maybe two drops left in the bottom of this. And I'm going to be using some opaque fluorescent tea. The fluorescent isn't opaque. It's not really transparent. It's kind of halfway in between in the category of how things look on baits. But this is a fluorescent sunburst from Createx. And that's going to cover the entire bait. We're just going to use a couple little drops here. That should be enough to get it going. And do the entire wake bait. There's not a whole lot of real estate on this. So just make sure you got a good flow. Even strokes. Cover the bait. All the way around. Make sure you get the face real well. One to, if you're brand new, a lot of you guys already understand the dynamics of how to paint, and this is probably just run-of-the-mill, everyday, ordinary painting for you guys, but for those of you that are new to this, or are just learning, one little trip to learn on these is not to put your helping hands all the way up. So you don't want to sit it like this because you might get a little void in coverage, so just kind of pull that down just how that is right there. We're going to heat set this pretty quick. Just enough to get it tacky. And then to the bottom, I'm going to add just a little bit of Wicked Detail Yellow and then a darker fluorescent orange for that throat area and belly. But starting at the tail of the bottom of this. Just need a couple of drops, nothing too crazy. 
We're going to start at the base. Make sure you've got the right color coming out. Just get a little bit lighter going on there. And then get out your... Now you could probably even use a fluorescent red for this. I'm just going to... I've already got this out. And that's not open. Hey, guess what? We're using... <laughs> We're using fluorescent red because that is open. I just got a bunch of new paint. I go through paint pretty quick. All right. Should be okay because we're blending. We already have some yellow in here. So just on the throat area right there. And then kind of halfway up the nose. And now this needs to get a full heat set before we go any further since we're dealing with stencils. And with stencils, you don't want to lay a stencil against the bait if, you're, if the paint is still tacky because it's going to screw up your entire pattern. So one of the things that I've done in the past that I probably should keep tradition with now is keeping my colors out for you guys so that you can see what we've used so far. The next color that we're going to be using is this pearlized blue. I've really been digging this lately. I've got something that's similar in a Spectratex and I love using this. This is a little more expensive than the Pearlized Createx. And the Createx, this, at least this particular color, has a really good tendency to flow well. So I like it. I have very minimum issues with the Createx products as long as you're shooting either A, higher PSI, or B, you use a little bit of reducer when you're shooting it. A lot of you guys ask me if I have any problems shooting with an Iwata Eclipse, I really don't. I don't know what you guys are using. If you're using maybe Masters, you might have some issues with flow because I believe that their, their chamber is a little bit thinner than some of the other stuff that's out there. Orange and blue are opposites on the color wheel. But that being said, you can still add in blue without having to mask with white first. And it does look okay, which is pretty much what we're going to be doing next. Bringing my pressure down from 30, just shooting solid, to about 15. And I'm just going to go ahead and mask this front area on the face. And you'll see right away that pearl color. And it's very pretty. We're going to go ahead and hit the nose a little bit, just a little bit further back. And then come at this from an angle behind so we don't get a lot of overspray pushing towards the back of the bait. Gotta love a good Saturday morning at the studio. Thank you, Lawnscape guys. No, I'm, and I mean, I'm not being snarky. They do a fantastic job on this area and they're here faithfully. But I, ha I, I went grocery shopping this morning before I got in and um, got a bunch of stuff in the fridge because I wanted really in the mood for grilled chicken tonight so I hit the Publix right around the corner from the shop and you'll notice I don't have the fan running but that's because there was landscaping a little bit further out there we go so now nope <laughs> okay you guys and that's one of the reasons I don't have the fan on because there's just so much background noise today that's okay you guys can just bear with me I really appreciate it you notice I'm leaving a little bit of red at the mouth and you can see how cool this looks wait for it okay i think you guys can hear me now you can see how shiny and metallic this looks and it's not the metallics it's just a basic pearlized blue for some reason, the darker the colors, the better off your shine is going to be on pearlized colors with Createx, just the way it is. But we've got that little, almost like a raccoon mask on the face, and we're going to keep that there. And then we're going to get our stencil, because we're going to use the exact same thing on this. So this is... <laughs> it's Murphy's Law. Um, this is a stencil from Brian Best over at Anarchy Model UK Custom Stencils across the pond in jolly old England. So we're just going to lay this against here with our hand and do one straight out. Come back around. And this is it's one of the reasons I keep so much paper down here. It's just easier. Um, I still have this, but I'm just 
there's such more volume of paint going on on this bench um, almost impossible to keep any kind of decals or anything like that visible there we go and we can continue to come down here do the bottom and then we're going to go over the top you always want to make sure that the scales are pointing in the right way. The points should be up here and the scale action should be back. You kind of curve these around. These are real easy to work with. They come on cards that are not cut out. Just for me, I like to cut them out because it seems like I can bend them a little bit easier and move them the way I want, especially with smaller baits, but even with the larger stuff that I'm doing with bull shad. And then we're just going to kind of feather this all the way back. So we just get a nice even layer of this pearlized blue. And I'm going to heat set this and come right back. So the next thing that we're going to do is go back into white. You can see I brought these two colors back out because these are what we used on the belly. Use this yellow detail from, Cre uh, from Wicked. Same, same company. Well, C Wicked and Createx are the same parent company. And then a fluorescent red because my fluorescent uh, orange was not opened yet. We have sufficiently cleaned out the airbrush pot here. Make sure we got you want just white coming back out here. So make sure that you push out whatever if there was any residual left in here. So on this, we're just going to flip to the belly, and I'm going to start by adding white directly to the belly. We're going to leave that there. Now, because I have white here, this is just, you can cut one of these, just any kind of a random pattern that looks similar to this will do. You can see that this is the exact thing that I used for the last one, but we're going to come in and just to the bottom, to the base of this, we're going to cover this back over with white. This is where that Jedi mind trick that I was talking about comes into play. You can see the way that looks. It's pretty much covered over the other colors. Opaque white is pretty brilliant in that you can hide a lot of things with it. I'm going to make sure this is not tacky. Flip this over and then do the same thing on the other side. Same pattern. You just make sure you have a clean line going all the way back to the tail. And while we have the white still out, you can see that there's a little bit of micro dot action going on in the face. So let's go ahead and get that out of the way. I try and use the colors all at once so I don't have to keep going back and changing it out so that's why I've got the base coats down first and then we can just come in and give this a little bit of a kiss with the white and do the same thing on this side just a little bit here and a little bit on the cheek here and then we're pretty much done with white We've already got the base on the belly. We've got our sides down. I'm going to add the original sunburst that we started out with on this pattern back into the chamber. We don't need a lot. I've got three drops and that's it. And yeah, I know that's getting a little messy. Apologies. Still got our pressure low. We're going to come back with this. Cool thing about this and also Russ Allen's are as well, you can wash these and get several uses out of them. Um, I've been using this one for probably a year. So these things are durable. They hold up. They're worth their weight in gold. If you're going to be doing any sort of stenciling or re repetition in your patterns. Now we're going to come back in with our orange. This is what gives it, this is that Jedi mind trick, which it's really not, but this is a neat little deal. And then make sure we get the cheeks just a little bit and now you have the opposing colors in the scaling flip this over make sure your stencil is in the right direction 
come back and do the same thing on the other side. You don't even really have to be careful because that color is already there, so it's not going to look out of place if you go over it a little bit more than intended, which is why I like this particular style and pattern. Now you have everything going on. You've got your scaling, two-tone in the blue and the sunburst orange. You've got white underneath of it. You've got white scaling on the belly. And now we just need to get the little ear flap going on, some eyes on it, and dip did -de doo in some KBS. Got a couple of different ones going on here. This is the one I normally use. It's a cool little ear flap and it's a hand cut stencil that I've done myself. It's got a little bit of glitter on it from other things, other projects and patterns that I've been doing. So we're going to just kind of wipe this dry and flip it to make sure it goes on well. Get a little black, just a couple of drops will do it because you really don't need much black at all for the ear flaps. Maybe two or three drops in here. Keep your pressure low. And make sure when you're doing your ear flaps that you lay it against if you have a defined um, gill plate, especially if it's at a different level angle. There we go. Come back to the other side. Find that defining line. And lay down the other side. The next part of this is fairly easy. Get yourself either a zero or some other, like double zero is good. That might be a little bit thick for this one. Try and find a very thin, round brush. And you really don't even need to drip anything out of this. Just give the white a little shake. Open the top up. Grab a drop. And that's if you want to put the mask on. Some folks don't. But if you do, you want that little white collar around the ear flap. I normally hold it just steady. Put my finger here. And then just build that white collar around this ear flap. Same with the other side. And I do apologize. My timing is textbook classic Jen Crevasse for noises in videos where you're trying to pay attention and learn something. Um, in Jonesboro, it was the motorcycle guys across the street. If you guys have been with me for a while, you know what I'm talking about. There we go. And we're going to find some eyes for this. Before we do the eyes, I want to come back to the shop sink and rinse this down real good. Always helps, if, especially if you have stencils with minute detail. And where is my scrubber? I had a scrubber here. Before I left for Virginia, it was right here. As to where it is now, who knows? But the whole purpose of this is just to get any paint out from the stencil as best you can. And then just let that Should dry. Be good to go. If it gets a little squirrely, meaning the white paint, if it's too thick for you guys, you can get one of these uniballs or whatever it is you guys use to... I made it this far in a video, yes I know, without saying Uniball Vision Elite. It's amazing. But you can just reline this with your black marker, your black, your black ink. The, the key is it needs to be acrylic ink, acrylic based ink. It can be water based, alcohol based is fine, although you gotta be careful what you clear coat with if you're using a lot of alcohol based inks. Make sure it doesn't smear it or blow it out. Um, some of them will, so be careful with that. 
But on this, we're just going to use regular old plain gold eyes. Very simple on this pattern. And I think gold eyes complement pretty well. I do like the darker of the golds and I do not remember where this card came from. I would imagine um, either Amazon or I'll find a link. I'll make sure there's a link below if you guys need some really cool gold eyes. Um, you'll notice that some of them have red and I've just done that with a Sharpie and then let it dry for a very, very long time, like a couple months before you use it because Sharpies will bleed as well. Um, unfortunately, that's the nature of the beast sometimes. I have not tried the new Sharpie S gel. Uh, I bought a couple of those, but they're sitting in my house, not here at the shop, so it doesn't do me much good. But if anybody has used that Sharpie S gel, the brand new Sharpie pens that have been, oh gosh, on the market maybe a month, maybe. They just came out and it's September. I'm shooting this video on September the 4th. Um, let me know. Let me know how you liked it. So that's what we've got here. Oh, and there's Mike Buca. Good morning, Mike. What? <laughs> I'm just going to bend a little wire here. We've got a piece of wire here. And I've got my KBS. Lord, do I have my KBS. Y'all, it's crazy. They just keep sending it. Um, yes, I do work with KBS. That is, they are not sponsoring this video. Um, but I have a lot of faith in them. I've been with them for a very long time. And I believe in their products. I believe in what they stand for. I do use other things. You guys are probably seeing some randomness. For canvas, I use a spray sealer if I'm doing regular acrylic or oil painting and I need to seal that onto the canvas. So yeah, there's other things here, but they're not for baits. I am exclusive with the KBS line. I also am going to be trying out some of their Max product in the next probably week or so, and I will let you know how I like it. I've heard some people are using it, some people don't use it. Lots of folks use lots of things. I can only recommend to you what works for me. And it does. And it has. Um, as long as you follow some basic procedures and guidelines, you should be okay. So now, we're just going to finish this bait. Let it drip off, especially with the bill. If you have a lipped bait, now obviously on swim baits we don't do that. But now we've got that in the tail. We're just going to bring this over. And that is that. Guys, thanks so much for hanging out with me on a Saturday morning with the landscape guys out in the front of the building. I hope I've been able to teach you a couple of things, and I really enjoy your company. It's always great company to see you guys. I will see you on the next video. Cheers, and happy casting from Jekyll Bates at Bullshad Studios.